In this video, I'll use the niche tool to place both a shower niche and a decorative niche that might be used in an entry or hallway. I'll cover adding a sill, casing, and shelves. Let's begin with the shower niche. The niche tool is part of the window family. You can see it on the left hand side of my screen at the very bottom called wall niche. When I place this wall niche in the shower, it will come in with all of the default settings that have been identified in the template plan. In this case, you can see that it's immediately below my shower band. Let's look at the niche properties by double clicking to open it up. On the general panel, you can find the size and position information. This niche is set up to be 14 and a half inches. Might be typical if you're going to be fitting it in between existing stud spacing. The height of the niche, 28 inches. The elevation reference, there's a few options that can be absolute if you're placing it maybe in an entryway where there is an open to below room and you want to place it up high, absolute would help. Floor is from the subfloor and finished floor would be from the finish surface from the floor. There are two settings you can define for the elevation, either floor to top or floor to bottom. And then the depth of the niche, which is important to know what the depth of your wall is you're placing it in. This would work for a four or six inch wall. Casing for the niche, if you want to add casing on the niche, there's an option to add casing on the niche. Lintel, sill, frame. In this case, I have a frame on the niche and as you kind of slide over and you look at the dimension of it, it's very thin. And as I rotate around, you can see that the niche actually has a different material on it. And this allows me to apply a different material, in this case maybe a tile or something, and that way it won't change the wall material. So if you intend on having a unique material that is independent from the wall, it's a good idea to have a frame. In my case it's very thin. You might have a thicker one depending on your needs for your niche. Shape of the niche can be set up. There's a match roof option. There's a different side height if you want to do that. Arching, I'm going to touch on this with the interior decorative niche, but there's several options you can do. And then there's some other information for the rough opening, framing information, the layers, materials. I typically apply these in 3D. The label for the niche if you want to control that. A lot of times if it's in a shower, I might come over here and override the automatic label which is a function of the width and the depth and I might come in here and just specify that it is a niche and that way in my floor plan view it's obvious what that is. Components of the niche, more advanced topics, you can always go into the help file and learn about that. Object information on the niche if you wanted to have a description. If you're using a precast niche, you might put the manufacturer and supplier part number in here. And then in the schedule, if you want to have it included in the schedule, you could do this. Typically, this might be used for a window where you're actually purchasing it. But if you're getting a precast niche, you could put it in the schedule and then specify what schedule it goes into. Let's take a look at placing a decorative niche and adding a few more options into it. Using the niche tool, I'm going to come over and click on the wall. It's in front of our screen. And once the niche is placed, you can modify this niche by clicking on it. In this case, on the bottom, I'll pull it down. You can make it wider if I want to stretch it over. And then by double clicking on it, I can go in and specify the details of this niche. Let's begin by setting the width of the niche. I'm going to set it to be 30 and a half inches and then the height of it, I'll set it at 54 inches. You can see a preview of it grow on the screen. Where he talked about the elevation reference, if you want to set the floor to bottom, I might specify that exactly at 28 inches. And then over on the lintel and sill, let's add the sill. I'll check the button. You can go in and change the sill. There's a profile that will open up the library. Same is true if you're specifying casing or a lintel. You can go into the library and specify the sill. Frame on there. This has a very thin frame because I want to have it maybe a different color than the wall. You can see the gray on there. And then for the shape or the arch, I'm going to come in here. There are a number of different arch styles. I'm going to choose one called the broken arch. 
and then we'll go ahead and specify that the height of that at 8 inches. Now you might notice in the rendering that I have, if I slide this over a little bit, you can see that the niche that I have in the shower is a round niche. You can specify the shape of your niche to be a round top and then there is an option to reflect vertically. So as long as you have that symmetrical, that's how you can create that round style of niche that I have there in the shower. Now that I have the parameters for the niche, let's go ahead and close the dialog. The last thing I want to cover is placing artwork or a shelf inside the niche. Let's begin by placing artwork inside the niche. If I kind of use the camera and we slide around, you can see that I actually have some artwork on the other side of the door here. Now I'm going to take and slide a copy of this, click on it, use the copy tool. I'm going to slide that over in front of the niche and then you can see that it's actually going to be on the outside of the niche. I'm going to return back into the floor plan view and position that back in. Now this artwork can be something you can find in the library. I'm also going to talk about placing the shelf. So let me return back into the floor plan view and let's go ahead and zoom in where that niche is located and it may be difficult to see which portion is the artwork but if I click very near where that is I may have to press the tab key to actually get it selected. You can press the control key to override bumping and snapping and slide that back into the niche. If you're using a Mac that would be the command key and again that overrides the bumping and snapping and allows you to slide that and position it into the niche. Now if I slide over into the shower portion and I want to place a shelf in here, this is going to be easy to do in the floor plan view. I'm going to come up into the cabinet tools and there's specifically a shelf option. I'm going to come over, place the shelf. You can see the default shelf is quite large. Let's just go ahead and click to place it out in the middle of the shower. And then I'm going to resize it. And we'll come in here, make sure that we maybe resize this to I'm going to use the temporary dimensions. And I'm going to resize this to maybe, I think that niche was three inches. I'm going to set it to be two and a half inches in depth. Then we'll go ahead and slide this over. And then again, I'm going to hold my control key down so that I can slide that inside the niche. Again, that overrides bumping and snapping zoom in a little bit more and then stretch it side to side to fit the niche and then as I go back into the 3D view you can see the artwork is positioned in the niche need to pull that down a little bit and then as I rotate the camera around to the niche inside the shower also maybe pull this niche down a little bit and then to change the material color we'll use the eyedropper click on the shower wall on the outside, come over here, click on the shelf itself, and then I have the material on the shelf. And since I have a very thin frame on here, I can also use the material eyedropper, click on the blue tile on the shower, make sure my material component mode is set for scoping so that it will only apply it on that unique individual component and then I can place that material on the niche. To learn more about niches and openings, please refer to the built-in help file, and thanks for watching the video.